Christian Roland St. Simon's Island. Are you excited to be in here today? Amen. So glad to have you. So glad to see all of you here. We are excited. Amen. We're excited. Let's come in here expecting the Lord to do awesome things. We know he will. Father, we praise you this morning. We love you, Lord. We glorify you. We welcome your Holy Spirit in this place, God. We thank you that you are here, Lord. We praise you. We pray that you would have your perfect will and way in us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
If you believe that this morning, give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Nothing is too big for him. Amen. Has he been faithful in your life today? Can you prove that he has been faithful? He has been so good, so worthy, never changing. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
past week, I was putting Bailey to bed. And I remember it was a really long day. I just felt kind of out of sorts, but I was putting her to bed and, and I was rocking her and she said, Mommy, sing. And every night I'll sing Jesus Loves Me over her. And I sang that and she said, Holy Spirit, and I'll sing that one too. I sang that. And she was almost asleep. And she grabbed my face. She looked at me and grabbed my face. And she said, Mommy, do not be afraid. And I said, what, baby? I was exhausted. I was ready to go to bed. And she looked at me. She held my face like this. And she said, Mommy, do not be afraid. And I started weeping. And I said, thank you, baby. And she laid her head on my chest. And that was it. She said, she said, sing, Mommy. And that was it. And I went downstairs, and I was telling Tim about this, how she looked at me and said, do not be afraid. And I told Tim I wasn't really afraid of anything. I had a great day. You know, we were busy with a two-and-a-half-year-old. She grabbed my face and said, Mommy, do not be afraid. And I felt that that was the Lord speaking to me. Jordan, do not be afraid. With, with, even if you don't think that you're afraid, even if, if you don't know what she, even she's talking about, I knew it was the Holy Spirit within her telling me. You know, the Lord was saying, Jordan, I've told you this in my word. I command you, do not be afraid. Be a, strong and of good courage for I'm with you. But if you won't listen to that, I'll have your two and a half year old look at you in the face and grab your face and say, Mommy, do not be afraid. And I took that because how many times I wasn't afraid. I told Tim, I said, I don't really know what she's talking about because there's nothing specific in my life that I'm afraid of right now, that I'm fearful of right now. But what little did I know that so many times we let our fear replace our praise. How many times have we let our fear, fear in our lives replace that moment of saying, Lord, we praise you. God, I praise you. Instead of focusing on these little situations, these sometimes huge situations, we can let that fear go and say, Lord, you're good. Lord, I praise you. Lord, no matter what, my bones will cry out. God, we praise you. Great are you, Lord. No matter what, we praise you. And I thought of how many times that I have allowed my fear to replace my praise. How many times that the Lord has protected us. How many times that the Lord has said, no car, that will not come. No, you are protected by the blood of Jesus. You will not, that cancer will not be on your body. And how many times I've, you know, even through brain surgery, I had brain surgery, the doctor said that I wouldn't live. And so many times I forget, Lord, you're faithful. God, you're good. You have preserved my life for your glory, God. You are here today. We are here. It is his breath in our lungs. So why do we praise because of that? Why do we praise? Because he's good. Because he's faithful, church. Because he wants you and he loves you. He's preserving your life for his glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So today, Lord, we praise you. We praise him not because our miracle is here, but because our miracle is on its way. We praise you, Lord, before our miracle even happens. We're praising you like it's on its way. I see it coming. Everyone else around me saying it's not there. It's not happening. But, Lord, we praise you like our miracle's on its way. We praise you, Lord, because you're good, God. We let our praise replace our fear today, Jesus. We praise your name, Lord. Yes, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, worthy are you, God. We praise you. It's your bread. Lord, it's your bread in our lives. Yes, so we pour.
the Lord is speaking clearly to us this morning that who we put our faith in is who we expect to answer our prayers. Who we put our faith in is who we expect to answer our prayers. The Lord says, if you'll put your faith in me, I will answer your prayers. So Father, this morning we raise our hands and surrender to you, Lord. May our faith be refocused on you 
may our trust be refocused on you, not on man, not on circumstances, not on other people, and certainly not on finances, not on economy, not on our president. Our faith today, Lord, may it be refocused back on you and you alone. Great are you, Lord. Great are you to be praised, Lord. Nothing is impossible with you, Lord. Our strength is found in you, Lord. Our provision is found in you, Lord. Our health is found in you, Lord. Salvation for our family is found in you, Lord. Our future is found in you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Greater you, Lord. Greater you, Lord. Greater you, Lord. So, Lord, today I pray. I pray right now, Lord, in the midst of our faith being peaked today. Lord, I pray that our faith will not diminish. Our trust in you will not diminish. Our hope in you will not fade. But, Lord, we will keep the faith, keep our trust, keep faithful to you, Lord, as you are faithful to us. God, too many times we look to the left or to the right and we, we focus our trust and our faith based on the circumstance, based on the high times, based on the low times. God, may we be never changing in our faith and our trust in you. And we will see, we will see that the Lord, he is good, that the Lord, he is faithful, that the Lord, he is great. You are great, Lord. And today we praise you, Father. May our lives change in your presence today, God. Greater you, Lord. <laughs> Do you agree with me this morning that great is the Lord? Greater you, Lord. Greater you, Lord. Greater you, Lord. I just encourage you, let's just stay in an attitude of worship. Let's just stay right here in an attitude. Don't change anything. And Jordan, if you feel led to go to another song, but I want us just to stay right here for the next little bit. Let's stay right here. The Lord is doing something, and we don't want to cut that short. Amen? So let's just worship the Lord. He is great.
lips your praise will ever be on with no music lord ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips for you are holy lord ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on no matter what we face ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on our words of god ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips we have nothing lord your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips i believe the lord is saying amen i believe the lord is saying our answer is found in our praise thank you jesus um i want to tell you guys a confirmation of crystal's word and how true it was 15 years ago, I'm not happy y'all were here then, I had a vision of God kicking open doors over the sanctuary and glory pouring out all over the place. And Luann was dancing, so I know you were still around. <laughs> and um, anyway, the last two weeks, no, nope, Lisa didn't even know this, but I've been fasting for a revival. And when you had that word, it's like my heart exploded. And I just want to confirm that's what he's saying he wants to do here right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We respond to your heart, God. Lord, we respond to this call of worship, this call of praise. God, we're responding to you. Oh, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips you will be praised yes you will you will be praised with angels and
on, offer praise to God this morning. pray that there's been a shift in our personal lives this morning. I pray there's been a shift, God, in our spirits, Lord, that we'll hold on to. Lord, revival begins in each one of us. Lord, you are ready. You're waiting on us. God, may there be a permanent change that your praise will ever be on our lips, God. Our answer is found in our praise. Our answer is found where we are right now, God. May we stay in this attitude. May we not fluctuate. May we not be hindered by things. May revival burn in each of us, God. That's where it starts, Lord. I pray that you seal what's been done, what's being done. Lord, you're not finished. You're not done, God. You're starting. (laughs) You're starting. The brewing that we've been feeling, the undercurrent that we've been feeling, the devil's been feeling it too, and he's been fighting you. That's right. He's been fighting you greater than he's ever fought you before. Why? Right. Because he knows what's that's coming. Right. That's right. He knows the stirring that's coming. He has seen it before. Yeah. And so he wants to hinder you. Mm-hmm. And I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Yes, I rebuke every hindrance in the name of Jesus. Yes. That will stand in the power of the Almighty God. God does not get tired, He does not get weary. So, Father, Lord, I pray that you'll sweep our hearts, Lord. Sweep our hearts today, God. Those that have been fasting, those that have been crying out, Lord, for you to do something great. Lord, I thank you that you are starting because we're starting to look toward you. We're getting our attitude right toward you, God. I'm getting my attitude right toward you. And I'm expecting it to happen. And, Lord, I pray that expectation on every heart and every life this morning, God. That the fire, that little fire, Lord, that's been blinking, Lord, The devil notices it's there, but God, may we ever have you on our mind. May we ever be praising you. May we not let up. And Lord, I pray that we will prevail, that we will overcome just like you have overcome. We will overcome by the word of our testimony. You speak the word of God, and he will continue to pour out his blessing. You speak the word of God, and he will answer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, your arm is not too short to that thing, Lord, that one may say, but what about my situation? My my situation seems to be out of hand. Lord, I thank you that you bring an answer, Lord, as we continue to praise you, as we continue to speak your word, as we continue to act in your word, Lord, you will not fail. You will not fail. You cannot fail, God. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what you have started, you will complete. What you have begun, you will fulfill. Your word lives on. Your word is continuous. Your word is mighty. Your word is strong. Your word is powerful. It conquers. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the price that's been paid today and forevermore in the name of Jesus. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. I give him a hand clap of praise this morning to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings.
that I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I am the Lord your God. I love you. We've just heard the Lord say he loved us. Too many times we don't respond properly to that. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Let's love on him. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. May our lives show that we love you, Lord. So at our Wednesday night home group, um, the topic has been worship for a couple weeks now. And this past Wednesday, we read from Revelation 4, and I just feel led to share that scripture. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third with the face of a man, and the fourth like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within, and day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne, and they worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things, and by your will existed and were created. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful this morning? We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If I might add to what Melissa just said, the way I was taught that is the, the, the creatures didn't say holy, holy, holy. They've been doing this forever and every and spinning around all the time. And every time they see God, they go, holy, holy, holy. And one day we'll be doing the same thing because we won't believe, but why wait? <laughs> why wait? Holy, holy, holy. Yes, good word. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and is to come. Thank you, Lord. We shout, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. You're holy, Lord. You're holy, Lord. You're holy, Lord. The Lord is here. Lord is here. <laughs> the 
that God does, the God we serve doesn't know tradition. He didn't read our program this morning. Aren't you glad he, he beats at his own drum? God has his own plan. That's where we get in trouble, where we think our plan is better than his. God has his plan. And this morning, we're in his plan. We're in his zone. We need to live here. We need to live in his zone. That's where the answer is. Thank you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. We praise you, Father. The Lord has ordained this church. At least you confirmed. I mean, all of these years, Jessica, since 89, Jessica, 15 years ago, you saw that vision. And here you've been in town for the last maybe few weeks, five, six weeks maybe. And the Lord put on your heart to do what you're doing, to pray in that vein. And, and we're seeing, and others have said the same thing. Others, God has shown glimpses of, of things that he wants to do just enough to make us hungry. He's given us a little appetizer here for the last several weeks. Don't be discouraged by the things that you're facing in life. Don't be discouraged by the things that you want to see that you haven't seen yet. Don't be discouraged. If we continue in him, what will he do? If we continue in him, what can he possibly do? Well, let me say, there's nothing impossible with God. He can do all things. And your answer is in him. My answer is in him. Our church's future is in him. Nothing is impossible. The little glimpses we've seen, that is only a taste. Only a taste. It's not even the surface of what God is capable of. Stay faithful. We've got to stay faithful. We've got to stay in tune with Him. We've got to stay focused on Him. Keep seeking Him. As you feel led to fast and pray, fast and pray. The Lord is sending, sending people. Brian and Lisa, come stand with me. Brian and Lisa Aldrich, come stand with me right here. The Lord is, is sending people that, that God is speaking to about coming. I mean, Lisa I've known for a long time, and, and here they show up. Brian, I've just met him, but feel like I've known him all my life. And, and they say, Pastor, we want to be part of what God's doing here on St. Simon's. And, and they were married last Sunday, and God's doing something in their life. But it shows us that, that God is sending people in certain critical areas, people with talents of people with abilities and people with a heart to see God do great things he's sending here I said we'd be honored to have you as part of our family what I want to share is a sermon that um, I heard about two weeks before we decided where God wants his people to be real because the, the church is supposed to be the hospital where people come that are broken. And he said to me, if you want it to be real, then you need to go make a change and show who I am in people, for people to come. We were blessed at our wedding. It was not planned to, it was gonna be private. The majority of the people that came are searching for God and are searching for a church and are searching for healing. And this, sermon that I heard from Jensen Franklin has been in my heart for two weeks now that if we want to see his see people healed we need to be the people to do it and we believe that we're in the place with loving people that care about others and that's why we're here amen 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 You know, when I woke up this morning with my eyes open, I, I started I started praying as soon as I woke this morning. And I just I asked the Lord this morning that I just needed a special touch from him this morning. I just I just needed to experience the Holy Spirit in a mighty way this morning. And I just asked him to consider the, the frailty of my body and my mind. And once again, he's delivered. And I just I just want to praise him. And I just want to thank each and every one of y'all for just welcoming, welcoming us in with open arms. It means a lot to us. We thank you. We love y'all.
Stretch forth your hands this morning to Brian and Lisa. Father, we thank you for Brian and Lisa Aldrich. We thank you for their life and for what they mean to us already, Lord. We know that you're working on them and you're working on us and you're working on us as a team, as a family. God, I pray for your anointing to be upon Brian and Lisa. Your anointing and your peace. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to show them what work to be done and you're going to open the way. You're going to have provision before them because you're going to prepare the way. You're going to open the doors. So, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for their heart to be here on St. Simon's with us, Lord, to join forces with us for the kingdom of God, for your sake, to lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for their lives today, their commitment to you, their commitment, Lord, to, to follow you in all that they do. We bless them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Be sure to love old Brian and Lisa as they're here with us. Amen. Pastor Tim, you want to come share what's on your heart this morning? We'll get as far as we can. As, as, as long as y'all want to stay, we'll stay for a little bit, okay? Amen. Praise God. Amen, amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. It's an exciting thing. You know, we, we were talking, we were praying that it's, it's exciting to come and wake up on Sunday morning. It's an exciting thing to come and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's an exciting thing. And, and, and I thought Pastor was going to go straight into preaching. I, I wish he would, but, but the Lord was laying something on my heart that I did want to share really, really quick. And uh, Pastor, do you want me to do the announcements? Or do you want me? No, okay. All right. Yes, okay. So no announcements today, but I'll let you know after church. Come see me. We'll figure it out. But. The Lord was laying some on my heart as everyone came up here and everyone was, everyone was uh, in agreement. You know, it was prophesied that the next great revival is going to break out and open up here on the East Coast. That was prophesied. Now, the location has not been prophesied, but it was here on the East Coast. And see, I believe that, see, this morning we're on the brink of revival. This morning, I believe that something has erupted. I believe that something has unfolded. You know, I, I started thinking, I started thinking these past couple of days, you know, there's been a heavy fog over this place, over this island. There's been such a heavy fog. You know, the past two days, you couldn't even see when you were driving. It was so foggy. And I started thinking about Moses and the children when they were in the wilderness. And there was a dew on the ground, and then when the dew lifted, it turned into fog. And when that fog disappeared, the children of Israel saw their blessing. They saw their manna. They saw what God had for them. And I believe that happened here today. I believe there was a fog. The presence of God met with us. That fog has lifted. And whenever we walk out of these doors, and whatever you came up here at the front of this altar and you are desiring for, I believe that God has it ready for you. I believe that it is ready prepared for you. When you walk out these doors, you are going to get that blessing that God has promised you. The thing is, is that what's funny about revival, and what's funny about revival is that the fact that it starts with repentance. That's how revivals start. I believe that as a church, we need to become a little bit more meticulous with our repentance. I think we need to become a little bit more meticulous with our lives and letting God examine us and let him change what needs to be fixed. There's so many things. I know there's many times in my life I, I have seen, I have done things. I said, oh, God doesn't care about that. He doesn't bother with that. It's okay. He's not going to worry with it, but no, he does. I, I mean, all sin, I believe, is, is equal. I believe the Bible says that all sin is equal. We need to become meticulous with our lives. And I believe when we do that, we're going to see an outpouring of our, outpouring of our Lord Jesus Christ like we've never seen before. You're going to see something hit this island like never before. You're going to see something hit your life like never before. But it all starts with repentance. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry for what I have done. I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry for doing that. Forgive me, oh Lord. I think we've gotten away kind of for forgiveness. 
we just kind of go throughout our lives when we come to church when we kind of feel like it or want to or want an emotional high. We were praying this morning. I was praying, Lord, let us not have an emotional experience, but let us have a changing experience. You know, I, I, it was so funny. I read something to my wife this, 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 this past week, and I read something to her, and it said, if change does not cost you something, it is not real change. Think about that. What have you given up for the Lord Jesus Christ? I remember when I was coming up and I saved and I gave my life to Christ, I lost a lot of things. But what I gained was incredible. He started working on me from the inside out. And all of a sudden, the spirit inside of me that the Lord put inside of me at birth, it came alive. And all of a sudden, my spirit outweighed my flesh. And now my desires came to what God wanted for me. Not what I wanted, but what the Lord wants. We're about to see. And me and Pastor has talked about it many, many times. There is about to be an outpouring on this church like never before. There is going to be experience like never before. I'm talking about an experience like, like uh, I believe it, it was R.W. Shambach. Who, he had such an anointing on him that they said when he passed by people and his shadow hit people. They were healed. I believe that kind of presence is about to fall on this place again. I believe it like never before. I believe that God is going to do something awesome here. We had a great leadership meeting yesterday, and everyone was in agreement. That's why, Pastor, I believe that there's such a, a power, a presence here this morning. It's because the agreement we have with our leadership means everybody was on the same page. Everybody was in one accord. We came together in the presence of God, and God says, that is what I want. I don't want you to be divided. Come together as one. Black, white, yellow, whatever. Come together. We are in this together. God created us all. What's that? He created, what, yellow, black, and white. We are all precious in His sight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just feel it. Stop the dividing. Come together as one, as one, as one church. And I believe yesterday we did that, and God is saying, that is what I want. That is how you get my presence. You come together as one. God is awesome. There's about to be an awesome pouring on this church. There's about to be an awesome pouring out on your lives. It is up to you to receive it. It is up to you to accept it. Hallelujah. God's about to do something awesome. After an awesome move of God this morning, this is an answer to, to, to God's heart, I believe. It's an answer to prayers. It's, it's what we need. Amen. It's what we need. And in, in God's outpouring, as I, as I said earlier, the devil fights harder. And so I believe that this morning I'm going to deliver this word because I believe it's instruction for us to stay on the right track. One of the, uh, the enemy's tactics in our life is conflict and Satan can use conflict in our life to where we're always um, in defense mode we're always uh, expecting something we're always uh, uh, we're, we're right ready we get up ready to ready to fight and and a spiritual fight spiritual warfare is one thing but it's another thing when we're fighting against brothers and sisters fighting against maybe our enemies we're always spending our time in conflict with someone rather than following through on spiritual warfare in God's way. And so uh, I, I hesitated during the, during the worship, during our time of, of worship together, uh, but I want to cut through right to the word. I believe that this is, this is a foundation, I believe, as we continue the series, that's beside the point today. As we continue, I believe in what God wants to say. It's a warning to us about conflict. When we, when we want to draw closer to God, when we want to see God, when we want to experience what God wants there's always, the devil's going to come at us with some sort of conflict, some sort of issue, some sort of problem. And I want to talk about that this morning. Colossians 3.23 says, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not to men. There are, there are four causes of conflict. There are four causes of conflict. The first one is poor communication. Communication is important with our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. 
Now, it would be one thing if, if God said, okay, Mike, I'm going to put you on this earth right by yourself. Go at it, bud. Go get it. But he didn't. So then it will be me and God. Well, even Adam and Eve was here, and they had conflict. So our, our human tendency is to have conflict when there's two people with two opinions, two ideas. Even though we think we're on the same page, there can be conflict. And we need to recognize that, that many times a conflict is started by poor communication. We first got to have communication with God for clear communication. And when we hear his voice, then we can communicate one to another. I love what Pastor Tim said a while ago. It's through unity. God wants us to be in one mind and one accord. That's how the revival of Acts happened. How? There were 120 in a room and they were in one mind and one accord. That doesn't mean that we agree on everything. That just means that we're not in conflict. We're not in battle. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. But it's a spiritual warfare. The things that you're seeing, the things that that is happening in your life right now, whether it's finances or health or relationships, all those things are, are tools that the enemy wants to try to destroy you, to hinder you, to discourage you, and to cause conflict in your life. And so poor communication, number one, with God is, leads us right into conflict. It leads us into conflict with one another. Conflict is a tool of the enemy. Psalm 141.3 says, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. The first, the first sign of conflict, what do we do? We go to the Lord. We're not to try to work out a conflict with each other and say, well, I'm going to tell him what I think. That's our human tendency to, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. I'm going to tell him, I'm going to, I'm going to work out this conflict all right. But if we go to the Lord first, the Bible says, set a guard, O Lord, on my mouth. That's where conflict starts. When I say something, I can either speak peace or I can speak conflict. Y'all hear me? He goes on to say that keep watch over the doors of my lips. Obviously, back in Psalm, David, when he wrote this, obviously conflict was an issue. Conflict's always been an issue. It was an issue with Adam and Eve, and it continues to be an issue. Conflict. Conflict will cheat us out of the revival that God wants to bring in our lives and in our church. So we've got to see that the onset of conflict, where it begins, we've got to go to God first. Set a, set a guard, oh God, over my lips, over my mouth. The second cause of conflict is unfulfilled expectations. I expect this to happen, I expect that to happen, and when it doesn't, then conflict develops. It's when things aren't done my way, and I want them done my way, then, then it's unfilled expectations. That's where anger begins. Anger begins with unexpected, expecta unfulfilled expectations, and then that turns into conflict with people. James 4, 1 and 2. I believe this is more than a series, more than part four of the series. I believe that this is really good fundamental teaching, I believe, from the Word of God for us to see how the devil will fight and to be on guard. James, James 4, 1 and 2 says, where do wars and fights come from among you? Where do they come from? It doesn't come from God. Do they not come from your desires for pleasure, that war in your members? It's a battle going on within us. You lust, which is a, a, a great desire, a great want. It couldn't, I mean, it's not just a sexual lust. It's also lust for money, lust for things, lust for your way, and lust. It's a desire or want, something that I want. And it says, you do not have. You murder and you covet. You cannot obtain. You fight and you war. Yet you do not because you do not ask. You don't go to God first. See, we can't expect people to fulfill our expectations. Only God can fulfill our expectations. Only God can fulfill the desires of our hearts. It's not that our desires necessarily are wrong many times. It's just that we're going to the wrong place, the wrong source to get our desires filled. God says, come to me. Go to me. The third cause of conflict is despising differences instead of appreciating differences that we may have. See, we're all different. We've got to, even our fingerprint is different. Our personalities are different. So our talents are different. Imagine a Georgia football team with nothing but quarterbacks. Imagine, imagine the Patriots with nothing but quarterbacks. They wouldn't be the team they are. There's, there's appreciation in differences rather than despising differences. Working as a team, that means we all have different talents and abilities and, and input that we can come together and enjoy one another and, and enjoy the differences that we do have. Don't despise them, but appreciate them. Many times in marriages, uh, uh, the very thing that drew you to her, drew you to him, is the thing that you wind up despising. I hate that about him. Well, wasn't he that way when you married him? Wasn't she that way when you married her? You know, so we, uh, opposites attract, as the old saying goes. So, so we need to appreciate the differences that we see in each other and not despise those differences. 
Mark 3, 25 says, and if a house is divided against itself, it cannot. It didn't say it may not. It says it cannot stand. When you're divided against yourself, you can't stand. There, there's, there's no foundation there. There's no stability there. Take it to God first. And of course, our, uh, we, we, this is a, an obvious one. Cause of conflict is our sin nature. That was Adam and Eve's problem, their sin nature. They had something that they wanted. So our sin nature, many times, gets in the way of us having peace and having understanding and, and being able to work with one another. And, and, and if we're not careful, that sin nature takes precedence over what God wants in our life. My way, and I want it right now. Romans 3.23 says, we've all sinned. Every one of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we see there, there, there's conflict and there's possibilities and there's causes of conflict, but how are we to deal with that? I want to I give you some, some solutions to, to dealing with, with, a, with, with conflict in your life. There's a story about Jacob. Everybody's heard the story of Jacob, but there's a story in, in uh, Genesis. It starts in chapters 28 and 29, and Jacob finds this girl that he loves, and, and he loves her, and he wants to marry her. So the right thing for Jacob to do concerning Rachel is to go to Rachel's father. So he goes to, to Rachel's father and says, hey, I want to marry your daughter, and I really like her a lot. I love her, and uh, I want your permission to marry her. I think that was very noble of Jacob to do that. Well, when he goes to, to, to Liam, Rachel's father, Rachel's father says, well, in order to, to have her, you've got to work for me for seven years. So uh, Jacob said, great. I love her that much. She's the love of my life. I'll be glad to work with, for you for seven years. So seven years pass, and, and he, uh, he, he marries uh, uh, Rachel. Well, the honeymoon that night um, didn't find out until the next morning that the dad, Liam, sent Leah in to be with him that night, not Rachel. Well, that's a sermon within itself. He didn't even know it until the next morning. And um, uh, come to find out Leah's not as pretty as Rachel. And so when, when uh, Jacob rolls over and sees Leah in his bed, he, he, he says, you know, what's the deal here? So he goes to Liam, Rachel and Leah's father, and says, you know, our agreement was that I was going to marry Rachel, right? And, and she was going to be with me. We we're going to be husband and wife. What happened? He said, well, it's customary that, that Leah being the oldest that we need to marry her all first. So, so that there, there's your wife. He said, but you can have Rachel if you work for me for seven more years. And uh, so Jacob said, you know, I really, really wanted to marry Rachel and have her as my wife, so I'm going to I'll work for you for seven more years. Well, that turned out to be 20 years. He works for Liam for 20 years, and uh, it's just trouble on top of trouble. And things didn't work out, and Liam took advantage of, of Jacob. So Jacob gets all the stuff together, loads his stuff in the, in the truck, and gets his wives, and he heads out of town. He gets out of town, and so then he hears that Liam's on his trail. And so can you imagine all the, all the turmoil going on in Jacob after all this stuff, 20 years here, and he's still... Uh, really not getting his way and so he's he's really finding his expectations to come from Liam to satisfy his desires until Jacob comes to himself and says maybe God's trying to do something in me maybe maybe there's something that God wants to speak to me about and so we find in Genesis chapter 31 and verse 46 it says then Jacob said to his brethren gather stones now when you think of stones you think of something you're going to pick up and throw at somebody but Jacob says, let's gather the stones. And so he took the stones, the Bible says, in verse 46, and made a heap. And they ate there on the heap. He made an altar before God. The very stones that, that what I believe resemble and, and, and symbolize our hate, our disappointments, our discouragement, all these things in life that, that, we, that we find that that really are working against us, if they would just do the, what they're supposed to do. Has everybody ever said that? If they would do what they're supposed to do, my life would be happy. If they would just do what they told me they were going to do, things would be so good. If, if, if they would just uh, fulfill their obligation that they made, well, see, then Jacob has his whole life tied up in what Liam did or didn't do, rather than what God is trying to do. So Jacob came to understanding, well, maybe there's something that God wants to do in my life. So he gathered stones, and I believe that each one of those stones, as they gathered them up, they were, they were going over what this means to me. This, is, this is, resembles, this, just, this uh, stands for my forgiveness, my love, and, and my, my devotion to God. And what's God trying to speak to me and build that altar? All those things and all those issues that, 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 that could have changed, they were at the control of man, they didn't change. And so I'm going to lay it on the altar before God, and I'm going to say, God, come do a work in me. Come see what you want to do in me. 
That's where revival starts. As I said a while ago, it, it, it starts with me. It starts with you. You know, we can come together, and, 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 and we will, and we are, continue to come together now over nine years. And we're going to see God do something great, but it's got to start in me first. I've got to build that altar, all those disappointments, all those things that I said, well, why, why, why isn't that 900-seat Family Life Center built yet? He says, Mike, listen, there's something I want to do in you first. There's an altar that I want you to build first. And so I take my eyes off of the things that can and cannot happen, off the issues that the daycare center should have been started years ago and it's tied up in Glen County, jumping hurdles and red tape and, and all the blah, blah, blah. You know, all those things can affect me negatively or I can say, God, you know what? I'm going to, cons- I'm going to serve you anyway. I'm going to let you handle all those things and I'm going to continue to serve me, serve you. And so as we serve God, then God decides he's going to do some things in my life that has to be done before he does his work. See, God wants to change people, but he's going to change circumstances in your life. He's going to bring things about in your life, but he's many times going to cause a change in you first. He's going to cause a change in me first before he brings that about. There's something greater that God wants to do. All those issues, all those hurts, all that conflict, can you imagine where Jacob was? Well, see, God says in his word that he's going to cause a river in the desert. In the dry place in your life, God can cause that when we look to him to bring that peace and that joy and the fulfillment in life. It's only found in him. It's not based on the actions of somebody else. Well, if you'll do that, I'll be happy. It doesn't stop there, does it? Our peace has got to be found in God. Our conflict has got to be resolved in God. If we ever put people priority over God, then that's our first mistake there. I expect people to fulfill my, my peace. I expect people to do something to fulfill my peace. That's actually putting more priority on their actions than God's action. God doesn't want that. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. See, if Christ lives in me, then things are going to be a lot different. Christ didn't do what he did in life based on other people's actions. If he had, he'd have never gone to the cross. He did it based on his father's instruction. Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved and gave himself for me. Jacob gathered the stones. The stones of hurt, I believe, disappointment, anger, conflict, and made an altar to God. So if we want to resolve these conflicts, we need to choose to act and not react. We need to choose to act out of God's word and not out of our feelings. See, our feelings are very confusing. Well, that's the way I feel. Well, many times the way we feel should not be justified. We we can't justify our actions by the way we feel. We need to respond and not retaliate. Respond and not retaliate. Retaliate is 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 a term that you use when you're going to war with somebody. I'm going to get back at them. I'm going to get them back. I'm going to retaliate for what they've done to me. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil. If we react, if we retaliate, then there's a place that we give the devil. And we can't have the peace of God as long as we're giving place to the devil. The two can't coexist. The second thing is focus on the good things in the situation. Focus on the good things in others. There's always good in every situation. The good may be God's changing my heart. He's changing my perspective. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are good, whatever, I'm sorry, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Now, some people today would call that positive thinking. We call it what you want. But we're to, we're to think on good things. Why? Because our thoughts bring about our actions. Our, 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 our thoughts will either cause us to be on the offense or be on the defense. What, what I meditate on will actually cause and bring out actions whether they are good or whether they are bad. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's the peace of God that comes through that that will guard our hearts. In other words, it will, it will cause us not to see those things as they are, but to see them as though they were. 
to see things through the eyes of Christ. Because if we always look at things the way they are, we become discouraged. We base our life on those things that we see. Well, we don't have to have faith to live by that. There's no faith required if we're going to base our life on what we see. But it's when we base our life on the things that we don't see is when we have faith in God. And he says that he'll give us the peace of God that passes all. We don't understand God's peace. It will guard our hearts and our minds so that we think like Christ. We can see through those things and see what God wants to do. Bring the peace of God. And then thirdly, apply God's grace to others. The same grace that saved me is the same grace I should give others. Many times, I want you to pay the price for your actions. Now, I don't want to pay the price for my actions. But I expect you to pay the price for your actions. That's not giving God's grace, is it? The same grace that I received, I should give that same grace. It's like forgiveness. The Bible says that I can't be forgiven until I first forgive. And so, so God gives us these things so that we can give it, give it back out. I should extend the same grace to you that God has given me. And man, that is, that's a whole bunch of grace. Without the grace of God, I'm not standing here today. It's because of the grace of God that I'm here that you're here. And we should extend that same grace to others. If, if, there's, any, if there's any answering for stuff, it should be with God. It should, you don't have to answer to me. Hey, we're in this together. But we should extend the same grace given to us. Romans 12, 19 through 21 says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. Don't feel like you've got to make yourself feel better or, or make someone else pay for what's been wrong to you. Hey, if you're, if you're living this life any amount of time, you're going to see that some people just are wronging you just for the fun of wronging you. If they can get your goat, they'll get your goat and maybe two. Don't take matters in our own hands. Do not avenge yourselves, the Bible says, but rather give place but rather give, give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. That's, that's the Lord speaking. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Well, now that's going a little too far. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If we remember God's grace to us, it'll be easy for us to give it out. This is... This is one of the foundations of revival starting in our lives. Like Pastor Tim said, repentance, repent. God, I repent of that wrong thing. And one of the repentance that we need to make today is, God, forgive me of being in conflict with the one who's wronged me. God, forgive me. Yeah, I've been disappointed. I've been discouraged. People have, have taken advantage of me like Jacob. Liam took advantage of Jacob. And he had some good, cheap labor for 20 years. And he dangled his daughter over just to, just to get Jacob to come along. Here's your carrot. So you just keep going. And then eventually I'll give. So, so we have things in life that happen. Things are going to happen. That conflict will happen on its own. But it's our choice how we react to that thing. And allow God for us to overcome. That's one of the things that we, I believe God's speaking to us. God's bringing revival. God's going to bring uh, uh, just a powerful move that we've never seen before. And we're on the East Coast. It doesn't matter. We're on the East Coast. It's going to happen. It's, we're on the East Coast. So the church, capital C, is God's kingdom, and so we're part of God's church. So it may not be just St. Simon's. We may be a, a link of what God is doing, but we're part of the church. We're part of God's church. God established this church for a reason. God established this church for such a time as this. Everything that's transpired, God has not wasted one little thing, not one little moment. All the history and time has built up and has come to this point for such a time as this. Amen. There's about to be some, some breaking loose. There's about to be some, some great things happen. But in doing that, we must stay rooted in Jesus Christ. In doing that, we've got to realize that the devil is going to fight like never before. And not to be discouraged by the things that, that, that may happen, may transpire. But to be encouraged because you know God is greater than the things that you see. Amen. Amen. We're not to be in conflict with one another. We're to stick close to God. So I want us to stand up this morning. Let's stand up together. And as we stand up, just think of those things. You don't have to speak them. Yeah. Come on up. You don't, you don't have to speak those things out right now. It's between you and the Lord. Just these next few moments. I believe God has done a great thing, but I feel like in the middle of that, that this instruction from the Word of God will help us to grow stronger. It'll help us to be, to, 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 to be uh, aware of, 
of what God is doing in the midst of what the devil is trying to do. Amen? So let's stay tuned into him. But I want us to do what Jacob did. And Jacob, he gathered the rocks. I want us to gather the rocks this morning. We're not going to throw them. We're going to build an altar. We're going to say, God, these things that are disappointing to me, those conflicts, those issues, those children that, 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 that I want to come to you, those grandchildren that are, that are uh, doing the things that they're doing, this financial situation that's not going my way, this person in my life that's fighting me, whatever it is, just, just in your spirit, just gather those stones right now. If you want to come up here and just stand, if you want to come here and kneel, do, do what you need to in these next few moments. Let's gather the stones right now. Let's gather them up. If you want to come up and stand with me, come on. We're going to build an altar right here. We'll build an altar. Just bring it up. Bring it up. Whatever those stones are, just, just in your heart, in your spirit right now, just, just bring those things to God. Just bring them up. There are situations that aren't pleasing to you. There are situations that you wish you had the power to change, but you can't. Not that the desires are wrong. It's just that who we're expecting to fulfill those desires. Build the altar. Build the altar. Jordan, lead us. And as, as we stand here this morning, I'm going to pray a final prayer in just a moment. But as we stand here this morning, we're building the altar. We're building the altar unto the Lord right now. Praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips.
today as we have gathered the stones, as we've gathered the disappointments, as we've gathered the anger, as we've gathered the conflict in our life, Lord, we stand before you right now, Father. We lay it right here. Lord, you can't take us any further until we release what's holding us back. So, Father, today as we stand here, we release that thing that is holding us back, Father. May we let it go. Lord, by the Spirit of God, may we break it off today in Jesus' name. And may we replace it with your Spirit. Thank you, Lord. God, you're doing a great work. And may we stay in line with you. Stay in line with what you want to do in our life. And God, we can't bring the past with us. We've got to let it go. We've got to drop the rocks. We've got to build an altar. We've got to say, God, take me to the place that you've promised me. The future in God is better than the past. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for every life this morning, every life, every heart, God, for the plans that you have for us today. Father, we love you. We praise you today. May we ever have you on our lips. May we, may we overcome by the word of our testimony. That is speaking the word of God. Our testimony is in the word of God. It's by your grace, Lord, that we can conquer anything in life. It's, it's by your hand, Lord. It's, it's by your work that we can conquer, that we can overcome everything and anything that we face that may try to hinder us today. God, may we see our situation through your eyes. And Lord, I pray for healing in Jesus' name. Healing over every life, over every mind, every spirit, Lord, today. I pray your healing virtue in Jesus' name to touch each one. Thank you, Lord, that you draw us closer to you, Father. That you don't judge us on who we have been, but, Lord, you see us as we're going to be. Father, you see us in full-blown potential. You see us, God, through your eyes. We thank you today. We love you, Lord. I pray may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Love old Brian and Lisa this morning. Love y'all. Have a great day.